Hey YouTube, Dawson Ryder here, coming at you again with my phone camera. If you don't know, I had to film yesterday's video with my phone rather than my usual camera because I'm having camera issues, and apparently it's not going to be as easy as I thought to fix it. I'm not going to have a whole lot of time over the weekend to do it, so I apologize. Some videos this week might be coming from my camera uh, on my phone or from my old camera uh, until I can get this issue fixed. But anyway, that's not what this video is about, just a preamble of why things look weird and I got like weird mood lighting because it's like super dark out. But anyway, so I got two bits of Power Rangers news to cover today. Uh, first of all, going over some stuff dealing with behind the scenes changes as we've been seeing that evolve. And then the second one is some toy news. So first of all, let's talk about the behind the scenes stuff. So over the course of this last week, we've been getting lots of news about the ever-changing situation as we transition out of Cosmic Fury with Simon Bennett leaving, as well as the writers and a couple other staff members uh, setting the stage for, uh, you know, a new future. And then we got confirmation this week, uh, someone tweeted out and then Illuminati confirmed it, that after Cosmic Fury, we will no longer be, no longer being, no longer be filming in New Zealand, at least for the time being, which is a big change. They've been there since Ninja Storm. Uh, you know, I did like New Zealand. I had no problems with it. You know, it gave us some beautiful locations. Um, in particular, I, Dino Fury went to at least a couple different places that were, um, you know, something we hadn't seen before, at least not seen from that angle, which was nice. But it can get old seeing some of the old familiar places. Although, to be fair, to be fa, we did a lot of that in Sentai and Rider. If you've watched Sentai and Rider for any regular period of time, I'm sure you recognize a few key locations, like a few different steps and areas. Uh, that one location I just call Helheim. It's like the weird kind of stony apocalypse ruin looking thing that they visited a lot for Gaim for Helheim and they do it a lot in Rider. Like I'm, I've been binging Geats recently and they visited there. I'm like, oh look, it's Helheim. So it's not like it's a Power Rangers problem, but it will be a nice change of pace wherever we decide to go. I feel like I heard the rumor of Canada at one point, which is a pretty popular place for a lot of places to, you know, film like, uh, you know, all the CW shows filmed out there and stuff. But I don't know. I think it'll be a nice change of pace regardless. Again, it's further setting the stage that no matter what happens, we are heading for a bit of a change in the future. Again, it seems that uh, based on all the information we know right now, the next thing to go into production will probably be the reboot. But if we ever do decide to pick up the main show or, or what we know is the main show now, anytime in the future, whether it's, you know, soon or later, there will likely be a lot of changes as we'll have to find new locations and new writers and all that type of stuff because I doubt they're going to have the same showrunners and writers working on the reboot as they're going to be working on what would be a version of the current main show. So yeah, just further, you know, signs of change. Also, in the Illuminati article that talked about, uh, you know, this confirmation, they said that apparently the scripts for the reboot are locked in. Something I had forgotten to mention, at least in one of the videos, in terms of, like, what's been delaying the reboot is, of course, as of right now, we have a writer strike, um, which could delay a lot of things, so it might not affect it as much as we think, although it could still cause some delays, obviously. You know, I know that there's things like, even when scripts are finalized, you have run into problems of, like, you can't change the scripts because that's considered, like, meddling with it. I don't know if anyone's heard that there's been recent, like, drama over them starting Deadpool 3's filming and, like, Ryan Reynolds can't Im even improv lines because he's technically a writer so that would be so it's kind of a mess so the point is though is it still might cause some delays due to various logistics but at least the scripts are possibly locked in i wasn't sure how far along they were i assume they at least had something done because you know how long i've been working on it but that's kind of good to know so at least they can presumably get the ball rolling on a couple things like casting and whatnot so i i still don't expect to see anything till 2025 probably more news about that next year but i'm excited because it seems like we're finally going to be getting to a time where we learn more at the very least i'm hoping heading into either the end of this year or the beginning of next year we get some sort of you know announcement or not like a direct I keep wanting to say direct because of like Nintendo but you know like a Hasbro Pulse thing where they lay down their intentions more even if we don't get a ton of details we at least kind of know a general blueprint which would be nice. But moving on to the next news story is the Cosmic Fury Morpher was found in Germany today. Um, all I have for that is a photo of that, somebody that found it, and then somebody posted a video going over some of the sounds. But it's out in the wild in Germany. I don't know what that means in regards to how long it'll be before we get it here in the U.S. I don't. I remember the Dimetro Zord, the Dino Fury one, was spotted internationally, and then it was only maybe two, three months before it showed up in the U.S., but... That's a good sign that we should be getting it soonish. I definitely hope that uh, we get it before the show. I think that would be really cool to see some of the Cosmic Fury toys on the shelves before the show. It would be very nostalgic, as I expect the show to drop around the fall, because they have a pretty distinct pattern of two content drops, one early in the year and then one in the fall, ever since even before we were formally with Netflix. A lot of people are like, why are they taking so long? I'm like, dude, they're exactly right on time. If they put it out as soon as they were done, that would not be a good business model. They need to have those two content drops. So I'm hoping we get to see 
uh, some Cosmic Fury toys on the shelves before the show. Uh, as far as the sounds and the look, I mean, the look, it looks exactly the same as the pictures we saw. Maybe like a little bit better now that you're used to it, but pretty much par for the course of what we've seen. You know, it's not the greatest looking, unfortunately, quality wise, especially in comparison to some of the other Prime Morphers we've gotten. It's more along the lines of the look of the Dino Fury Gold Morpher, unfortunately. However, the functionality seems to be pretty fun. That's one thing I have to say is for the most part, um, even in the lesser ones, the functionality generally is pretty varied and fun. It does have this one gimmick, which was confirmed last time, I just forgot to talk about, that it can, I guess, interact with the show. Like if you put Dino Fury up on TV, it will make sounds and interact with it. We haven't heard a lot about how that's gonna work. It seems like it might be kind of funky the way it like reads it, like it might not be the best tech, kind of like the reader on the Dino Night Morpher will sometimes fritz out. We'll see, you know, that'll be kind of an interesting one to try to show off for the review in the future when I get it. Uh, but some other cool stuff with it, you know, you got a bunch of different colored LEDs on the orb. You can lift the top back up and like the orb, I mean, you can see that from the toy pictures, uh, but the, the orb has a bunch of different colors. And it looks pretty cool with like all the glowing colors and stuff. And you have like, uh, you know, the typical sound you do, you know, kind of like, you know, techie sounds and stuff like that, blaster sounds. And then you have for the Morphin sound, you have a bunch of like, hey, noises. That was a weird noise I just made. And then uh, for each individual ranger, you have them saying like, it's Morphin time, and then some sort of animal noise. And it seems like you do have the actual voices for the individual actors. Um, all of the, you know, core rangers we know, plus Fern, the Orange Ranger, which was a news story that broke a long time ago that we got, are going to be getting an Orange Ranger, which will be Fern, Izzy's girlfriend. Uh, you know, that was confirmed by some pretty reliable sources. People still doubted it, but this is pretty much official confirmation. As far as I could tell uh, from skimming the video, it doesn't seem like there's any other surprise rangers in this morpher, unless there's like one that sounds sort of similar, but at least we've confirmed the Orange Ranger Fern in there. And it's nice to hear like the actual voices of the actors. Like it's funny at first, I'm like, well, you're wasting the voice acting on just some ha noises, but they actually have that morphin time. It may be cool to get a couple sound bites. Not as much as like the Memorial Edition Sentai Morphers where you're just basically watching the show. Like, you remember that joke about how, no, it's not a joke. They released Skyrim on, on like Alexa, didn't they or something? It's kind of like that. Like you joke about releasing it like that, but it's like, dude, they released like the entire show in these Memorial Editions. But it would be cool to get a couple different sound bites is my point. But hearing the actual voices and not just like a really generic one or a generic uh, imitation is pretty cool. And not to mention getting the confirmation there for that. And as far as the animal sounds go, a couple of them sound more dinosaur-y, a couple sound more like, you know, like creatures from Q-Ranger, like a lion or a wolf or stuff like that. It's kind of hard to tell. Ferns definitely sounds more like animalistic and not like a noise that a scorpion would make. But I don't know. I feel like I'm the only one. Everyone's like trying so hard to box in like what Zords the Rangers have to be using like categorizing it. I feel like I'm not too worried about that. I remember Simon Bennett tweeted out a while back like it might not be them using the Zords you think. So I'll be interested to see what they are but I think people are trying too hard to categorize all this stuff. But it's interesting nonetheless. I think in the case of these sounds it might just be about what they had available. Um, you know if they're meant to be dinosaur sounds it still makes sense because their suits are still dinosaur themed. But I don't know. It'll be interesting to see what Zords they uh, they pilot when we get to it. But the bottom line is, for the most part, outside of the TV functionality seeming kind of wonky, it seems like the Morpher is going to be pretty fun. I think it'll be one the kids will like. Um, I do at least give them props for them having a lot of different functionality and sounds to it. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing some Cosmic Fury toys on shelves. Like I said, it would be really hyped to have it before the show. It would be nostalgic like back in the old days. I'm probably most excited to see the figures just because I want the basic figures and also the Zords. Well, I mean, like, I'm not super stoked for the toys themselves because I already have the Q-Ranger ones, although admittedly, I'm excited to see what the articulated Q-Ranger ones will be like. I'm more excited to see the Zords because I'm curious to see uh, if it'll give us a good indicator of what Zords we'll be using. Because I'm curious how many of the Q-Ranger Megazords we'll be using. Like, are we going to use all of them? We're going to use like two? I don't know. I'll be curious. But what do you guys think of all today's news about leaving New Zealand and about the first look at the Dino Fury Morpher? Let me know in the comments as always. Until next time, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and climb the steps and ring that bell so you can get notifications for my videos. Dawson Ryder, signing out.